Play that back, bruh. My littlest lady, my last baby, turned five today. And as I was decorating the house last night, I was thinking about when my kids were babies. And all the times I heard they grow up so fast. Enjoy every moment. They're only this little once. You're gonna miss it. And now I'm on the other side, years removed from diaper bags and sleepless nights. And I have to say, I only miss the baby days when I'm looking at them through rose-colored glasses. While I like to think that I enjoyed all the enjoyable moments the best that I could, those early years were hard. And of course, a piece of me misses the sleepy snuggles of a newborn. They've been replaced with I love you mores and the biggest hugs ever. And while I'll continue to enjoy this sweet pictures highlighting the best moments of those difficult days. I'll also continue to enjoy the enjoyable moments, vent about the tough ones, ask for advice when I need it, and watch them grow up so fast. Cause yeah, they are only that little ones, but I happen to think the moments become more enjoyable when your child is present in them with you. You know, when their brain turns on. Somewhere in the toddler years, they start to communicate in their Funny. All that to say, parenting can be so hard at any and every age, and there's no shame in admitting that. But also, I haven't had to change a diaper in years, and that is really neat. Okay, bye. The Case for Reparations Part 2. Logic. There have been a few times when Black people were promised reparations and didn't get them. At the end of the Civil War, four million formerly enslaved people were promised land to own, live, and work on. But Andrew Johnson gave that land back to the white enslavers, and Black Americans got nothing. By some estimates, that land would have been worth $3.1 trillion today. Then in 1965, Linda B. Johnson created affirmative action to help rectify the impacts of slavery on black people. But two years later, women were made a qualifying group for the program. And today, white women benefit the most from affirmative action and the actual descendants of slavery benefit the least. Now, if I promise you this entire pizza as repayment for a debt I owe you and your ancestors for hundreds of years of sacrifice and trauma, but I only give you one slice and your oppressors get the majority of the rest. Would that make any sense? Would you consider that debt repaid? Reparations are still owed. Let's do an outfit inspired by drum roll, please. Sapphire. This would have been absolutely perfect with my pink hair, but I'm sorry, I have to let my natural hair breathe. It is natural hair era. I am in my black girl spiritual journey right now. A new era will be upon us. For the base of the outfit, I have this three piece set from Finesse. What does she get? <laughs> It's literally her color palette. I am Starfire in another world. Aren't we alike in so many ways? I too wish for the fatherly love. I don't have purple boots, so I think these will work. I literally got these for a Halloween costume. Absolutely. Okay, what shoes? I really don't know. Kidding. Actually, these would actually be not that bad. <laughs> I think I got the wrong kind of fur or something, because what is this? I'm sorry. What? You know, I usually hate being tall because I feel like little kids will point at me on the street and be like, Mommy, that's a man. But you know what? I honestly don't really care. Whatever you think I am, at least I'm hot. My only thing about this is I don't have painted toes. <laughs> Hey. I honestly feel like a glamazon. Yeah. And lastly, to go with the vibe of what's going on down below, I got these star earmuffs because what doesn't give star power more than star earmuffs that are literally her hair color? I'm just convincing myself that the pink hair was a missed opportunity, but whatever, we are still coming. What do we think? Is she giving star fire? I too wish for the fatherly love. Stay tuned for the Insta pics. Love you, dollies. Mwah. Yes! Are you in pain? Well, take a gel ice pack and throw it out because we're getting our health care from the dollar store today. Grab a bottle of rubbing alcohol, pour it into a bag, and then fill the rest of the bag with water. Then just seal it and gently place it in your freezer. When it freezes, it'll be a slush that you can drape or wrap where you need ice. It'll be colder than ice, and yet it won't be so stiff that it pokes into you when you have it wrapped up. Follow along for more dollar store first aid tips from Nurse Holly. I think the reason Afro-surrealism as a combo works so well is that there are so many things about being black in America that are fundamentally incredibly surreal. I was at a table at a Denny's at night once, and I was there with two of my black friends. And this is the only time this has ever happened to me when I was there with two other black people. Um, they didn't even bring us water for like almost an hour. They just told us to sat down and then ignored us for like, for literally a, like an hour. And every now and then we would like, try to ask somebody like if there was any information about what was going on and they'd be like oh um i don't know i'll ask and then they would just disappear like we would never see them again and i've just had so many experiences like that over the course of my life and if you ask any black person in your life like they'll have stories like this where it's it's like it's impossible to even explain in realistic understandable terms how First of all, how scary and, like, alienating it is, but also just how fucking weird racism is. It can literally feel like you're in a dream. 
And I mean, like, surrealism is really popular right now in general, just because, like, there's so much about our general experience for everyone that's really surreal. But I think that, in general, this sort of style lends itself really well to portraying Black ideas and Black experiences. Sorry to Bother You is probably my favorite movie ever. Dear white people, let's talk about gentrification. Gentrification is really the process as to which a poor urban area is made new economically because more wealthier people are starting to move into that urban area. Now, that probably does not sound like a big deal. I mean, picture it, there's so many wealthier people moving into urban areas, making all our neighborhoods better. We're getting better stores, better grocery stores, more gardens, fresh markets, etc. The problem is that when wealthy people move into urban areas, they are putting the residents that previously lived in these homes, the black and brown people, at risk of losing their homes. And this is because when a group, a group of wealthy people decide to move in to live in an area that they can already afford, they are able to transform this area into something greater than what it's at. And economically, things, the prices are going to rise. The rent is going to start getting higher. This will then leave black and brown people having to work double. They will constantly try to find a way to make more money, constantly find a way to provide for their family. And then eventually, they will have to either move out or get evicted. And this is because they cannot afford the community that they once could afford. Gentrification not only harms people money-wise, gentrification also takes away a neighborhood's social culture. For example, if you walk into a Latinx neighborhood, you are able to acknowledge and understand their culture by what you see. Their restaurants are on full display, their clothing stores are on full display, and even their art murals are on display. However, when gentrification strikes and these white individuals, these wealthier people, decide to move into this Latinx neighborhood, it immediately diminishes their entire history and culture. Because instead of seeing Latinx in the neighborhood, you will see more white in the neighborhood. Because you see white instead of Latin X in the neighborhood, at restaurants, a meal that was once $10 would now be $20. A shirt that was once $5 would now be $10. A grocery store that once sold reasonable items for a low price would now be replaced with a grocery store that sells higher price items. It's crazy, but it is so true. Let's share our toxic experiences with the Christian youth group, Young Life. Toxic experiences, all Young Life does is send college students to high school campuses to befriend the wealthy and popular kids and convince them to hold social events and house parties so that they can recruit people to that $1,000 summer camp. And if you can't pay for that $1,000 summer camp, don't worry. You can do landscaping work for their wealthy donors so you can pay off your debt. I know they could, they could just like pay for it for you, but... Since you're poor, you obviously need to learn the value of hard work or you would have chosen better parents. Now, don't worry because at the end of it all, it's going to be worth it. You're going to go to a summer camp where your camp counselors will teach you a game to trick girls into kissing you. And then at the end of it all, they're going to emotionally manipulate you into accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. What is toxic about any of that? That's an echo, gentlemen. Just a little something we have here in Louisiana. A little parlor trick, don't worry. Sit down at my table. Put your mind at ease. If you relax, it will enable me to do anything I please. I can read your future. I can change it around some too. I look deep into your heart and soul. You do have a soul, don't you, Lawrence? Make your wildest dreams come true. I got voodoo, I got hoodoo, I got things I ain't even tried. And I got friends on the other side. He's got friends on the other side. 
Hey, good morning. I don't think we truly understand just how cartoonishly evil of a man Henry Ford was. Remember when I told you that Hitler had a picture of him on his desk? Well, he also had a life-size portrait of Henry Ford behind his desk. <laughs> when he gave an interview uh, with the Detroit News about why he had this portrait, it, he said, it's because Henry Ford is my inspiration. <laughs> I wish to implement the things he does in America here in Germany. And then he went and created the Volkswagen Beetle and modeled it after Ford's Model T car. This is how cartoonishly evil... <laughs> Henry Ford was. He even had his own personal police force that kind of functioned like his own personal mafia, his own personal Gestapo. They even threw a man over a bridge one time. This is how cartoonishly evil this man is. In March of 1932, during the Great Depression, there was a hunger march against Ford Motors, right? Where the employees planned to present a 14-point plan uh, for better working conditions. They were met by the police, who shot at them. And the men responded by throwing sticks, stones, and clods of dirt at the police. And eventually the police retreated. And so they kept going with their march until they got right up into Ford, right to the gates of Ford Motors, where they were again met with Ford's police, his cousin, the Detroit police, the Detroit Fire Department, and the Michigan police. And at that moment, Henry Ford pulled a Montgomery Burns and said, release the hounds. And the police opened fire on these protesters with a machine gun. They had one. <laughs> one of them pulled up in a car, leaned out the window with a machine gun and went. Trrr. Four people were killed and more than 60 people were injured. Now, this is just how cartoonishly evil the man is. He hated cities. <laughs> he didn't like cities at all. And because he was one of the largest employers in Detroit, he uh, separated two cities by race. Dearborn, where he was from, was for his white employees. And Inkster <laughs> was for the black employees. And they called it Inkster because it was full of black people. Get this. The man went to Brazil and bought hundreds of acres of land to create his own rubber plantation. He called it Fordlandia. <laughs> It failed in 1934. <laughs> he created the five day, 40 hour work week and the weekend. Now, as cartoonishly evil as that man was, he, like Montgomery Burns, did some good things too. But you'll never believe what he did. Just because they see a black face, some users will automatically keep scrolling. So, now that the racists are out, do you know one cultural thing that almost all post-slavery black societies have in common? Carnival! Rio, Salvador, Trinidad, Cabo Verde, Haiti, New Orleans, Notting Hill. Across the Americas and beyond, Carnival is a time to express our complex identities and turn society upside down. As today is Shrove Tuesday, or Mardi Gras in French, which is the combination of carnival for most of us, not all I know, I'd like to tell you a little bit about carnival in my home island of Guadeloupe. Sure, we have the beautiful costumes, the floats, the colors, the lights, but we have something that is quite unique to the Guadeloupean carnival. There's a particular type of float that not only is meant to make you dance, but it's also meant to impress you, to scare you, by reappropriating symbols of our troubled history and affirming our identity with pride. How is it possible to scare with pride? Well, simply being black is already a start, but follow me for part two and I'll show you how they do. It's so funny how I'll post a video that engineers can relate to because I'm an engineer. And there are always some men who are like, um, that happens to men too, you bitch. <laughs> and you just like not fathom relating to a woman. All right, this is my makeup tutorial every day. All right, we're starting off with the hydro grip with niacinamide from e.l.f. All over the face. Then I put Urban Decay Tinted Moisturizer. I love this shit. Y'all should get it. It's amazing. And I just beat my face. Then I take some white concealer 
and just put it in my base basically in my t-zone so like underneath the eyes the chin the forehead and then i blend it out to give me some brightness you know what i'm saying and then I take the Smashbox setting spray all over the face and this very cool toned contour that's perfect for like olive skin, but still pale, so you don't look orange. Um, yeah, it's great. Then I take this Fenty Beauty Lavender setting powder. This shit is bomb as fuck, y'all need to get it. It's so brightening and it makes it so smooth. But yeah, come back for part Alright, this is part two, my makeup tutorial. So first I outline my eyebrow and I fill in the ends and then I make a guideline at the bottom and do upward strokes until I reach the end of the eyebrow and blend it out with my finger to make it look softer. Then I take this huge jumbo NYX black eyeliner pen and basically just blend it out with a brush. And then I set it with black eyeshadow. And then I blend it out with a dark gray eyeshadow. And then I blend that out with a lighter gray eyeshadow. Just to make it look all diffused. And then I take eyeliner, just do a basic wing. And oh my fucking god, this inner corner shit is so hard to do on camera. But anyways, I'm doing my mascara, I guess. All right, and then I finish it off with this bomb ass lipstick. I love this shade on me. And yeah, that's it. Five of us have been killed in 2023. 38 of us were killed in 2022. The overwhelming majority of which were trans women. The overwhelming majority of which were trans women of color. Brianna Gay was killed four days ago in England. She was 16. In the US, Zasha Imini Tuitaho died less than two weeks ago. Unique Banks was killed on January 23rd. Casey Johnson on January 14th. And Jasmine Star Mac on January 7th. So what's the government doing? You know, the organization that's supposed to establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility. Well, in 2022, 155 anti trans bills were proposed. Currently, there are 311 anti-LGBTQ plus bills in circulation, most of which are targeting trans people, targeting our healthcare, our place in the classroom, our performance art, our right to use the bathroom, to play sports, to change our names. I know that as trans people, we've grown accustomed to seeing stories of our hardship in the media, but this video is not for trans people. To the cis people who watch my content, you're used to me being lighthearted and showing you examples of trans joy. But I'm white, I am able-bodied, and I've lived in a blue state my entire life. Most trans people are not necessarily afforded those privileges. And while the trans experience is the most beautiful thing imaginable, it is tarnished when media ridicules us, society threatens to harm us, and the government preys on us. So while I will continue to highlight the joy of my trans experience, it is just as important to acknowledge the hardships my community faces and advocate for us when we are in harm's way. I wanted to make this video in light of Brianna Gay's death. It's heartbreaking to see a kid get murdered for being herself. And I know her death has been hard for a lot of us in the trans community, so please take care of yourselves and take care of each other and I'll talk to you soon. Like this brings the movement down Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around